Get a better broadcast podcast and video voice. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. We're looking at scripting for a better voice at the moment, from writing it down to marking it up. We'll come to marking it up in a few days' time. Uh, Because uh, the better a script is, the more confidently you're going to be able to communicate your message to your listener. And if you're feeling confident, then that's going to affect your voice and your whole presentation style. You're going to calm down, you're going to lose the nerves, you're going to lose the stress and the strains. Your voice is perhaps going to drop a little bit and you're going to make fewer mistakes, so forth and such like and so on. It all helps get a better broadcast podcast and video voice. So we're looking at script work and um, you've got to check your script before you read it on air. Uh, and and preferably read it out loud. We we, we looked a, a little bit earlier, didn't we, a few days ago, at unintended rhymes within scripts, and we've also looked at how to get out of reading in a sing-song voice in scripts. So listen back to the last week or so's episodes to check out those editions if you haven't heard them. And today we're looking at unintended scripted jokes. Again, very often, these jokes don't materialise. You don't spot them until you're actually reading your copy out loud uh, rather than reading it with your eyes. Ambiguity is usually where a joke becomes funny, even with a stand-up comic. They're leading you in one direction with what they're leaving out or what you are being led to presume. And it's not until the punchline you suddenly realise that you've been tricked yeah, because of the ambiguity of the scenario or the sentence. So sometimes similar ambiguity can be built into a script by mistake. And of course that can offer a rich source of humour at the newsreader's expense. Let me take you through a few of these. Orchestra musicians at the Royal Opera House are threatening to strike next week if the management turns down a 10% no-strings pay rise. Teams of traditional dancers from various parts of Kenya expose themselves to World Scout delegates in a grand performance. About 50 students broke into the college, smashing glass and chanting, No cuts, no cuts. A porter had his hand injured. During evidence, PC John Wilkinson said that John Deepledge had given him a violent blow to the testicles. They both fell to the ground. Four men have been convicted of smuggling cocaine with a street value of more than £41 million into the UK on a private jet. Border force officers opened suitcases brought back by the men from a trip to Colombia and found half a tonne of the drug. I reported Julie Jones as more. And found the man shot by the dustbin. You can see the unintended jokes in the script there. And this final one wasn't actually in a script, but supposedly in a live cricket commentary when a player called Michael Holding of the West Indies was bowling to the man at the crease, Peter Willey of England, in a test match back at the Oval in 1976. And the phrase, the bowler's holding, the batsman's willy, caused great hilarity. So, a good pre-read and rehearsal should help you spot those and other problem areas. And with experience, you'll be able to sight-read by spotting these several words ahead of actually reading them out loud and to employ diversionary tactics. But obviously, it's better if you check and rehearse and mark up your copy well before you read it on air. It's kind of called proofreading, really, which is what we're going to be talking about tomorrow as Get A Better Broadcast Podcast and Video Voice continues. From London, I'm Peter Stewart. Bye.